Oh, it's your cell phones. And we have corn. Okay. Huh? Just silence them. Okay. The city desires to accommodate persons with disabilities. Accordingly, any person who requires an accommodation pursuant to Chapter 286.26 Florida Statute should at least 48 hours prior to the meeting submit a written re request to the chairperson detailing the accommodation required. Any person who decides to appeal any decision of the Code Enforcement Board with respect to any matter considered at this meeting will need a record of the proceedings and for such purpose may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceedings is made. Which, rec which, record, which record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be, in, to be based. Any person or defendant who requests to renew or object to any exhibits presented to the Code Enforcement Board by the City of Titusville prior to submission to the Code Enforcement Board must stand and state their request to review the exhibits prior to review by the Board at the time their case or agenda items comes before the Board for hearing. Any person found to be in violation of the City of Titusville Code of Ordinances and given a time frame in which to comply shall, upon compliance, be responsible for containing the code enforcement super, for contacting the code enforcement supervisor for an inspection to verify said compliance. The violation will not be considered to be in compliance until the code enforcement supervisor is notified and verifies compliance. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. And we have a quorum present. Um, your roll call vote, roll call please, uh, Megan. Member Herman. Here. Yeah. Okay. Member Edwards. Here. Nope, he's not here. Member Edens. Vice Chairman Beckles. Here. Member Grant. Here. Member Monis. Yeah. Chair Chairperson Bell. Yes. Here. Okay. Deborah, would you like to swear in the witnesses, please? If you're going to testify, would you please raise your right hand to be sworn in? Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. Have you all had a chance to look at the minutes from last, from the last meeting we had in October? Any questions, changes, concerns? I need a... I need a... Uh, Madam Chairman, I'll make a motion okay, to accept the meetings as read. Go ahead. In the last month. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Any second or any questions? Second, please. Second. All right. Motion made by Ed, second by RL. Um, I'll please do a roll call vote, please. Vice Chairperson Beckles? Yes. Member Grant? Yes. Member Monis? Yes. Member Herman? Yes. Chairman Bell? Yes. And it's approved. Okay. Chelsea, you're up. The first case listed on your agenda is number 19-46 for the property located at 302 Willow Street. And Officer Tuggle is going to present a PowerPoint presentation to the board after submission of the exhibits. Would you like to go ahead? Sure. Before I start the PowerPoint presentation, I'd like to submit the notice of violation, or the affidavit for the notice of violation, the affidavit for the notice of hearing and complaint, and the cost recovery as exhibits one through three.
This is Code Enforcement Board case number 19-46. The respondent is Brian Kenneth Davis. The violation address is 302 Willow Street, which is also his mailing address. Upon initial inspection, the violations were 13-26 overgrowth, which was in compliance as of September 5th, 2019. 12-23 junk and debris, and property maintenance, subsection 102.2 maintenance, which we verified today is in compliance as of today's date. Subsection 302.7, accessory structures, 303.1, swimming pool maintenance, and 302.3, pool enclosures. Originally, we received a call from the water department that the property was occupied without an active water source. My initial inspection was August 12th of 2019 when I posted the notice of violation on the property. Um, on the 13th, it was sent by certified mail. It was returned on August 19th, unclaimed. The notice of hearing was posted at City Hall on October 21st, and it was also posted on the property. The certified mail was again returned unclaimed. They were given until September 2nd of 2019 to comply. I have not had any contact with the owner. My follow-up inspections were on September 5th, September 23rd, October 14th, October 31st, and today. The property is still not in compliance as the violations still exist except for the violation of overgrowth 13-26 and property maintenance subsection 102.2 maintenance for the water. 12-23 machinery, parts, scrap lumber, etc. storage and maintaining prohibited shall be unlawful for any person to cause or permit junk, scrap metal, scrap lumber, waste, pro waste paper products, discarded building materials, or any unused abandoned vehicle or abandoned parts machinery or machinery parts or other waste materials to be upon, in or upon any yard, garden, or lawn. The maintenance section I won't read to you guys because he's in compliance of it. For the swimming pool, which is section 303.1, swimming pool shall be maintained in a clean and sanitary condition and in good repair. For section 303.2, enclosures, private swimming pools, hot tubs, and spots containing more than 24 inches in depth shall be completely surrounded by a fence or barrier not less than 48 inches in height above the finished ground level measured on the side of the barrier away from the pool. Gates and doors and such barriers shall be self-closing and self-latching. This was on my initial inspection. The carport area was covered in miscellaneous items. This on the right side of the fence, there's probably a good at least one foot gap in the fence where anybody can just walk through to the backyard. This was the overgrowth. Um, this is the screen enclosure which if you look closely, you can see there are no screens. It's just the metal frame. This is more of the junk and debris throughout the carport area and yard. Okay, this is the order to correct photo. They had, someone had mowed the grass, which I found out was the neighbor who is mowing the grass now. Um, the fence is still in disrepair. This is the hearing date photo. And this was as of the 7th of November 7th, which it looks exactly the same today. That's the pool. Um, and it's a reflection of the stuff around it. It's almost black. Very, very dark green, almost black. Um, the fence, again, has still not been corrected on that side. There's a closer picture of the pool. There is still um, this pile of wood. There's a tire in the yard. There's a, a washing machine and some other random trash throughout the yard as of this morning. I recommend, based on the testimony and evidence presented in 19-46, it is determined that the respondent, Brian Kenneth Davis, is the owner of record of the property located at 302 Willow Street, located in Titusville, Florida, as determined by the property appraiser's records, is in possession or control of the property in violation 
of Title Code and Ordinance Section 12-23 6-109, subsection 302.7, 303.1, and 303.2, as defined. It is further recommended that the Code Enforcement Board order the respondent to correct the violation on or before 12-6 of 2019. In order to correct the violation, the respondent must remove all the junk and debris from the property, clean or drain the swimming pool, and repair, and repair the enclosure and fence. Order the respondent to be assessed the administrative cost in the amount of $155.56. If the respondent does not comply with the order, a fine of $50 per violation per day should be imposed for each, uh, each day that the violation continues. Any questions of Ashley? So can you clarify which ones are still in violation? Yes, it was. It's 12-23, junk and debris. 6109, subsection 302.7. 303.1 and 303.2. So only one has been. Two, technically. Was 13-26 on there? The overgrowth 13-26 was removed prior to the agenda being published. So yes, only one off the agenda has come into compliance. I have a question. Um, around the pool, I know you said part of the fence is not complete is that pool open where somebody can get in is the yard open where somebody can get into it yes the um on the one side of the house where there's about a one foot gap in the fence someone can easily walk in there and the screen enclosure all the screens are out of it so they could just walk so it's in a safety issue too at this Correct. point okay. yes and a couple of times when i was there they have a chain link fence on the one side and it was open so each time i'd close it when okay. i was there okay. i have a question for you <laughs> Is that property being occupied? That, according to, the, I believe it's the parents of the owner, no, it is not. I have not had any contact with them. None, no. not, nothing. No. But they had all. forced light to put hurricane, to put board up the windows. There's also been no trespassing signs added to the property since oh. I cited it. But that doesn't make any difference for us, does it? Okay. I mean, for the enforcement office, okay. All right, what do y'all want to do? Go ahead. I move that the board issue the following findings of fact in, the, in conclusion law in this case the respondent is the owner of the property located at 302 Willow Street, Titusville, Florida. Um, that the respondent was given proper notice of code violations found by the code enforcement officer and was given a reasonable time to comply before the case was brought before this board. That respondent was given proper notice of this hearing. That respondent or representative did not appear t at today's hearing. That's correct. Okay. That the evidence and testimony presented show that the respondent did not bring the property into compliance by the date set forth in the notice and the property is in violation of the following provisions. Section 12-23 by reason of junk and debris. Uh, section 6-109 property maintenance um, subsection 302.7 by reason of accessory structures and fence subsection 303.1 swimming pool maintenance subsection 303.2 enclosures respondent shall be given until um, December 6th 2019 to bring all violations into compliance, it shall be the respondent's responsibility to, to immediately notify the code enforcement officer when compliance is achieved so that the officer can inspect and confirm compliance. If compliance is not achieved by this date, a subsequent compliance hearing will be held and a fine in the amount of uh, $50 per day per violation may be imposed. Um, and it shall continue 
Okay, shall be imposed for each and every day and for each violation um, as they continue past the compliance date. In setting the proposed fine, the board considers the gravity of the violations, any actions taken by the respondent to correct the violations and any provision in any previous code violations by this respondent. The city's costs of prosecution are imposed in the amount of $155.56. Got a second? That's it. Second. Second by Ed. Any questions? Roll call vote, please. Member Herman? Yes. Member Monis? Yes. Vice Chairperson Beckles? Yes. Member Grant? Yes. Chairperson Bell. Yes. Motion carried. Okay. We're not getting the the things on the computer screen. The PowerPoint. Click, click on the middle icon. Yeah, the middle icon. What middle icon? Remote presentation. I don't have one of them. Where? Thank you. All right, great. That's the next one. Okay. All right. Everybody got it now? Okay. All right. Next case, please. The next case on your agenda, number 19-48, is regarding the property located at 2300 Columbia Boulevard in Titusville. And the officer assigned to this case was Frank Lewis. Frank, would you like to join me at the podium? case number. <laughs> uh, this next case is 19-48, uh, uh, 2300 Columbia Boulevard. At this point, I'd like to introduce into evidence the uh, notice of violation, notice of hearing and complaint and affidavits, a cost recovery statement, and an email from community development to uh, business owner and applicant. Permit applicant. Yes, ma'am. Hmm? No, I'm good. All right, here we go. Uh, case number 19-48, respondent is 2300 Holdings, LLC, Larry and Jennifer Rhodes. Violation address 2300 Columbia Boulevard, Titusville, Florida. Uh, Notice of violation was mailed to 4655 Cali Corto, Titusville, Florida. The violation charge is uh, section 6-56 permit required. Okay. The narrative, uh, the property has fencing along the road frontage and beside the structure that was installed without a permit. Um, the initial inspection was on June the 14th, 2019. Notice of violation hand delivered to the staff at business. Uh, this is a fence company at this address. Uh, notice to respondent was uh, 
was sent uh, on uh, June 14, 2019, and signed for on 6 21 19. The notice of hearing was uh, posted and mailed on 10 22 19. No, I'm sorry, it was posted at City Hall on 10 22 2019 and hand delivered to the business on the same day. Certified mail was sent on 10 2 19 and returned signed for on 10 11 by the owner, signed for by the owner. Uh, date to given to comply was on before July the 14th, 2019. Uh, I've spoken with the business owner, and the business owner, business owner met with community development services staff on July the 18th, 2019, to discuss what the conditions that need to be met in order for the permit to be issued. Uh, as to date, they have not been, to my knowledge. Uh, Follow-up inspection on 9-17-19 revealed no change. And there has been no permit issued as of this morning. Now, uh, on December 4th, 2018, Secure Fence Business, the business owner at 2300 Columbia Boulevard, had made an application to the city to install 775 feet of fence that's six foot tall and 66 feet of 10 foot tall fencing on the property. The building department notified them on December 18, 2018 that the application was incomplete and required a resubmittal. Then on January 25, 2019, the building department sent an email to the applicant that they would need to meet the requirements of a high security fence, which includes landscaping. There was no further action taken by the applicant. After six months of no action from the applicant, it was turned over to code staff as work was completed without a permit. After notice of violation, the applicant met with the planning staff on July the 17th, 2019. A summary of the meeting was supplied to the applicant started, stating that a variance would be required for the security fence in excess of six feet in height. The building department has not had any other contact from the applicant. Okay. City code defines 656 construction permit required. Uh, it's unlawful for any person to construct, alter, repair, remove, or demolish, or to commence the construction, alteration, repair, removal, or demolition of a building, swimming pool, or structures in the city without first obtain, obtaining a formal permit. And this is an initial photo taken on uh, photo taken on 10 10 19. That shows that that's the fence in question, and. Um, the fence out front, fence out front again. Like I said, there's 775 uh, feet of this fence that runs along Columbia Boulevard. And I apologize, let me back up one more. Please, there it goes. Uh, it's hard to see, but just to the right of the structure in, in there, you can see part of the fence that's there, the security fence. It's kind of hard to see. I apologize for not having a better photo of that. And this is the permit application to the building department. Building department. Would you like to enter this? Mm -hmm. The city would like to enter this as exhibit number five. Copy will be submitted to the board. Yes. This was in your folder too. Okay. You ready to go? Yeah. Okay. Okay, that's the other part of the permit, page two. That's actually the and that's actually the email. Yep. That's an, that, that is the email from the building department. Yeah. What? Which is this? Is this the? Is this going to be Exhibit Four? Or is this a different email? Does that is that is the email from the building department to the uh, applicant. Okay. In response to the uh, the initial application. application, what conditions need to be met for the application okay. could be approved. So this will be Exhibit Six. Can you uh, 
There's no date on it. Can you clarify the date of the correspondence? Oh, I'll have to see it. As displayed on the PowerPoint <coughs> presentation, this is an email from January 25th, 2019. Yep. Top, yeah. January 25th, 2019. Original application for the, the original permit was applied for in December of 2018. And I assume Gen Lee Development understands they're supposed to have permits before they build all this stuff. Since they're the well, there it says they're replacing the existing fence. Yeah, but still, you got to have so a permit. Yeah, but I would assume Jen Lee, he's supposed to be putting it in, since they're under there as the applicant. Well, uh, it was not Jen Lee. Not I don't think it was Jen Lee themselves that put it in. It's the business owner there that installed the fence. Oh, okay. The property was transferred by warranty deed. The, I have a copy of the warranty deed for this parcel in my hand stating that Gen Lee Development transferred the property to 2300 Holdings LLC in January of 2019. January 23, 23rd, 2019, it was recorded. And I can submit that into evidence if the board would require that. I do not feel it's necessary. But the parties, the party that had submitted the application was the owner at the time, and now the owner is 2300. Holding? Yes. Okay. Either way, whoever has it knows they have to have a permit. Yes. So that's their fault. Any other questions? I think he's still, are you still presenting? Yes. Okay. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Okay. I do not have that. Okay. That's actually what you just Yeah, okay. This this is actually for uh, actually uh the uh resubmittal what is required on to be on on the permit application when they resubmit it. That's just a copy of what you yeah. yes, you have have that in evidence. Second page of that same statement. Okay, this was a photo taken November seventh. No change. No permit as of this morning. Upon that, a recommendation is based on the testimony and evidence presented in uh, Tosville Code of uh, Code Enforcement Board Case nineteen forty eight. It's determined that the respondents twenty three hundred Holdings LLC is the owner of record of property located at 2300 Columbia Boulevard, located in Titusville, Florida, as determined by the property appraiser's records, in possession or control of the property, and in violation of Titusville Code of Ordinances, Section 656, as defined. It is further recommended that the Code Enforcement Board order the respondents to correct the violation on or before December the 9th, 2019. In order to correct the violation, the respondents must, must obtain the permit for defensing, remove it, or make a successful variance application to keep defense. Order the respondents to be assessed administrative costs in the amount of $102.03. And if the respondent does not comply with the order, a fine of $150 per violation per day should be imposed for each day the violation continues. If I can interrupt, your cost recovery sheet has total cost of 102.73 on your cost recovery sheet. Okay. There's a slight error in the cost there. So which one should be 03 or 73? 73. Okay. All right. Anything else? Can you go back to the, the slide where the Planning Committee reported the, that one. That one, okay. May I ask a question in the meantime? Go ahead. 
have you talked to the owners at all, or what are they I saying? I talked to a representative, the property owner, when uh, it was determined it was going to code board. Uh, I have talked to the business owner there a couple of times, mm -hmm. and his staff. Are they saying they're going to try to comply, or do they just ignore you, or just? Member I mean, Beckles, the owner and representatives are in the audience yes. and would like to address the but board. They're going to speak. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Help me to understand something, please, if you don't mind. The original owner of the property you said transferred it to um, Jesus. I can't even. Twenty-three hundred holdings. Twenty-three hundred holdings, right? Mm -hmm. Right. The original owner is the one who who put the initial application in for the permit. The. Ownership has changed by name only, and the entity holder, the persons who are owners of the business, right. are the same. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mr. Frank, do you know when this... Um, Brad Pierce uh, sent this e email out to them? No, ma'am. No, you don't know the I date? Okay. Any other questions? Okay, you said that someone's here, Chelsea, to speak for the company? And bring them up? I'm not sure who all in the audience would like to speak, but uh, that now would be the appropriate time for an owner or representative of the property to come up to the podium. Yep. And I need to go ahead and swear you in. Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing, nothing but the truth? Yes. And could you please state your full name and your business address? Vicki Jacobs, 2300. You need to speak into the microphone. Vicki Jacobs, 2300 Columbia Boulevard, Titusville. Is that 32780? Okay. Is that what you asked for? Mm -hmm. um, you go, you're yes. going to have to speak into the microphone. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I just want to scoot your stuff aside so it doesn't get messed up with mine. So I represent the um, business that rents the property from the 2300, what's it called? Holdings. Holdings. There you go. Um. We've been trying to get the fence permitted. We've sent correspondence back and forth, and we're more than willing to do the, the fence permit in accordance to what's required. But when we went to a meeting in July, I think it was, the one that you just asked him about, when did Mr. Parrish send that email? That was July 22nd is when he sent that to us after the meeting. It was a meeting like this that um, this was sent afterwards, I wasn't part of that. And my husband, who was, is not available today because he is a veteran, and it is Veterans Day. Um, so we got all kinds of other stuff listed here, as you can see on that email, that was requested. And it's not just about the fence permit. It's about all these other things that are listed on there. So... We originally applied for the permit. We corresponded, or we got back that the fence is got to be 8 foot and not 10 foot. So we sent a revision December 13th. We emailed a revision. And this January 25th email <coughs> that was discussed from who I talked to in the building department today, they said it was never actually sent January 25th. It is somehow in this record, but she went ahead and um, emailed it over to me, but they don't have actual record. That's why there's like no date on the email because it wasn't actually sent. So, like I said, I mean, I don't really know what I can do besides ask for a continuance on this to 
get everything. We've I've took a picture of what we've done with the fence that he doesn't have a picture of, the 10 foot, but now it's actually eight foot. I've taken a picture of that, that we've taken down the top two feet of the fence to comply with what's required. And from what we understood, the only issue was that, not the front fence, uh, the aluminum fence, the six foot tall fence. So, I mean, that's all I'm here to hopefully accomplish today is to say that we're, we're more than willing to comply with what you want, get the permit, and carry on. May I ask how much time would you be asking the board to continue your case? Well, at the attorney's advice, they said to ask for a four-month continuance. Uh, this would be um, 23 Holdings attorney. She's, again, it's Veterans Day, not available today. Um, ask for a continuance um, for four months to comply. Four to, months from now? To complete the signing and the sign and permitting and per, to sign permitting process. Something to that effect is what she emailed us. So that was her recommendation. All right. Let me get something straight mm -hmm. before we go any further. Mm -hmm. They didn't have a permit to put the fence up. That's the whole kit and caboodle, correct? So why is it going to take an additional four months to get a permit? That I don't understand. I, Can that was just her recommendation. I, is, I don't believe it should take four months to no. get a permit. But I don't either. But. That was her recommendation. On what else is still out of compliance? Well, right now, the only thing he's got on, on our sheet is the lack of permit. Well, what I'm asking him, though, what, <coughs> what else do they need to bring the fence into compliance? Okay, she well, said it was taken down. Uh, I, I think, think there's a list of other stuff, but I don't remember what was on there. What you have, if you look at the application, the original that we had, we've shown in the, I think it was the third one, you see that all they had was the application date. None of the reviews have been done, nothing has been issued, and nor has it been accepted. They actually need to come in, renew that application, and provide those documents that are required and start it into the system. It's never even been ap applied to in the system. There's a permit number. There is a permit number, but there's also no data in the permit other than the application date. It's incomplete. So, so it's oh. incomplete, and it would, always, it would remain incomplete until they start the dialogue to add those pieces of the application to satisfy one, the security height fence and then go forward from there. So yes, it's achievable that they could do this within a very short time. 30 days? Uh, 60. 60 days. So all, all we're looking at is, is really is, uh, is, the, is the paperwork yes, sir. for the permit and, and, and come in, else. meet with staff, I, with bring all that current data that they've asked for, sit down at the table, apply it, pick up your permit, and get the inspections, and we're done. May I ask the applicant um, how many signs there are on the property? I don't know. In Brad's comments back to the applicant after the July meeting, one of the comments addressed the number of signs and that a new ground sign needs a permit. <coughs> and if there's no current permit for the sign, then that would fall within the scope of 6-56. And I recommend that this board allow one month, um, which I think would be a reasonable period of time for both staff and the applicant to go back to the table and evaluate what permits may be needed or required in order to get this property in compliance. And if any greater detail is needed about a sign that may require a permit, then I'll bring it back to you in December. So are you asking for the board to go ahead and continue it one month, not give, find them in violation and give them a month to comply? You're just asking to continue it for yes, a month? Yes, because I would like to present greater evidence if there is indeed a need for a permit for a sign, which I don't have that evidence in front of me at All this right. time. I, Madam Chairman. Okay. Um, Do you, you understand what we're talking about? Yes. Giving, actual... giving you, uh, just continue this for one month. Well, once we make our, you know, once we make our vote on it, I mean, we can continue efforts to get the fence permit. 
But and as far as whatever her sign issue is, that's something else? So Because I don't know anything about a sign issue. My request for the board is to consider continuing this case for 30 days in order to allow the property owner and the tenant to obtain any necessary permits for the property, which may include any necessary sign permits. I do not know at this time if there is an outstanding sign permit that needs to be resolved. Other but the code, the, but the code section that's presented before you today, 6-56, would capture any issues with both a fence or a sign. And so after some research on my end with the Planning and Development Services staff, I will let you know if there is an issue with the sign. There may not be an issue, but based on the notes from that Brad Parrish after the July meeting, he stated that a new ground sign needs a permit. So I need to look into that. And the applicant has stated that they're working towards compliance with the fence. And so this 30 days should allow the applicant the time to obtain compliance or at least have a meeting with staff to figure out what's needed in order to get that permit. So the request is to um, for a continuance, 30-day continuance to the next meeting. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I move that the board issue um, a continuance on case 19-48 until December the 9th, 2020, uh, 2019. Second. Motion by Ed, second by Gina, to uh, to re, uh, do a 30-day continuance on this property. Any questions? Roll call vote, please. Member Grant. Yes. Member Herman. Yes. Vice Chairperson Beckles. Yes. Member Monis. Yes. Chairperson Bell. Yes. So moved. I mean, so 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 considered. So you'll have, um, Deborah. Yes, I'll go ahead and prepare an order that will um, state that the case was continued to the next month's meeting. Um, staff will go ahead and issue another notice of hearing. And are you taking, are, do you want to be copied on uh, the notices? Are you requesting being given um, notices? I would say yes. I, I don't know that we are or aren't now, so okay. yes. Currently, notices are required to go only to the property owner, 2300 uh, Holdings LLC is the record owner of the property, and the notices have all been sent to that address. But we can additionally send notice to you at whatever address you request at this time. Yes, yes, I would say. So which, is it the 2300 Columbia Boulevard? Yes, ma'am. It's, it's, is that where staff is sending notices? No, the address that was uh, referenced by Officer Lewis was the Calle Corto address. The record address, uh, 4655 Calle Corto, Titusville, is the business, 2300 Holdings LLC record address, according to SunBiz. Okay. Thank you. An additional copy will be sent to you then. Okay. Thank you. Next case, please. All right. The next case on the agenda is for case number 19-49 for the property located at 2405 JJ Road in Titusville, Florida. Again, Officer Lewis is the officer assigned to this case before the board. And I'd like to invite him up to the podium. Before we begin the PowerPoint, we'd like to enter the notice of violation into evidence as Exhibit 1. The affidavit notice of hearing and complaint into evidence as Exhibit 2. And a cost recovery statement in the amount of $102.73 into evidence as exhibit number three coming your way. Officer Lewis, you may take over. Uh, 
Okay, uh, this is uh, Code Enforcement Board case number 19-49. Respondent is, Sol I think it's, is it Selen? Selen Inter Enterprises, LLC. Respondent is Selen Enterprises, LLC, uh, Victor Salencia, Victor Salenica. Okay, my bad, I'm sorry. Violation address is 2405 JJ Road, Titusville, Florida, 32780. Mail to 300 Dog, Tra Dog Track Road, Longwood, Florida, 32750. Violation charge is section 34-10, permits required for a roadway construction. Uh, the narrative has, goes this. Uh, this is a vacant lot that has been partially cleared and a roadway created that connects to a commercial property owned by the same company that fronts US-1. The owner does not have a permit to clear or alter the lot. Okay, uh, the initial inspection was on July the 12th, 2019. Uh, notice of violation posted on the property. Uh, notice to respondent was, was uh, mailed on July the 12th, 2019. It said mailed to the dog track address and signed for on, by the owner on six, July, I mean, June the 20th, 2019. Notice of hearing was uh, posted at City Hall on Oct uh, October 22nd, 2019. And on the property, certified mail was sent on October 2nd, 2019 and returned signed for on 1026, 2019. Uh, I have spoken with the property owner who's also been in contact with the, with the uh, development services staff at City Hall. Uh, Follow-up inspections on July the 12th, 2019, July the 25th, 2019, and September 13th, 2019. Uh, the results of the reinspection on July the 9th, 2019, Development Services staff advised the applicant that a Class II permit would be required, and application should and, and, and applicant should submit online that he should submit it online. As of November the 11th, 2019, there has been no application made or permit issued. Uh, city code defined 34-10 permits required. Uh, to clarify a little bit, you'll notice the last case was 6-56. That was permit required. That was for the building code. Uh, this one states 34-10 permit required states no use of property or change to the same including clearing, grudding, grubbing, grading, or excavation shall be commenced nor shall buildings or other structures be constructed, erected, moved, or altered without first obtaining a permit. Okay, this is uh, the posting, the initial violation. On June twelfth, twenty nineteen. Uh, another picture of the road. Uh, this road measures approximately seventeen to twenty feet wide and about four hundred sixty nine feet long. Now, this is a copy of an email uh, to the uh, applicant, the respondent from Development Services. Tell them what they would need to do in order for a permit to be issued. What conditions need to be met. Okay, and as of November the 7th, that was the picture of the road. Uh, the lot is actually zoned residential, and it connects from JJ Road, and this road in question that was built connects the property from the JJ Road to the back of the property at Front US 1, which is Victoria's restaurant. Another photo of the road. The recommendation, based on testimony and evidence presented in Titusville Code Enforcement Board Case 19 49, is determined that respondent Selena Enterprises LLC. Is the owner of record of property located at 2405 JJ Road, located in Titusville, Florida, as determined by the property appraiser's records, in possession or control of the property and in violation of the Titusville Code of Ordinances, Section 34 10, as defined? 
It's further recommended that the Code Enforcement Board order the respondent to correct the violation on or before January the 9th, 2020. In order to correct the violation, the respondents must obtain a permit or remove all the material and, re and return the lot to its natural state. Order the respondents be assessed administrative costs in the amount of $102.03. Seventy-three is another one typo. So. One hundred and two and seventy-three cents is what's on okay. the statement. One hundred two dollars and seventy-three cents. Correction. <laughs> okay. If the respondent does not comply with the order, a fine of two hundred fifty dollars per violation per day should be imposed for each day the violation continues. And respondents must contact the code enforcement office to arrange for inspection of property, verify verify compliance. Any questions of Mr. Lewis? Again, I have a suspicion that there's some member of the audience who would like to speak on this case. Okay. Well, before, did you, do we, is there, anybody have any questions for Mr. Lewis? Okay, are y'all here to speak? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Which one are y'all speaking? Well, Jim probably has the most information on it. I can give you my, my input, but it's going to relay back to Jim. Okay. Y'all going to have to come up, to, one of y'all going to have to come up to the podium and get sworn I'll in. swear you all in. <laughs> you, uh, all three of y'all can stand up here and then she'll swear all three of you in at the same time. Whoever wants to say anything, I'm, I'll go ahead and swear you in. Okay. Do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Could you please state your full names and your business addresses? Jim Garrison, president of Garrison Construction. Mr. Garrison, you need to get up to the mic, please. Hi there. I'm Jim Garrison. I'm president of Garrison Construction. We built the Victorious Restaurant. I'm not involved in this construction that you're looking at right now, but I, as a friend to Vic, the, the owner who is here now, he asked me to help him get this straightened out, which I attempted to do, and I'll go further later. Okay. I'm Victor Salonitsa. I'm the uh, vice president of Selene Enterprises and Victorious Oyster Bar and Grill. Uh, the address in question is 2405 JJ Road. My business address is 300 Dog Trek Road in Longwood. That's just my corporate office. Um, we are in the process of correcting all the, the situations. We have, uh, you know, the, it was requiring some engineering and things like that. Uh, unfortunately, that was beyond my capacity to do and understand what was needed to be done. Uh, therefore, I've, uh, you know, asked Jim to assist me in this, and, you know, our goal is to get everything brought up to compliance with the city as quickly as possible. Uh, that I would yield to Jim. First, I'd like to state that this is a mischaracterization of a road. This is not a road. This is a private driveway. And I'd also like to reveal to you that the existing driveway was there. It wasn't paved or anything, but it was a driveway, and it had been in use for years. Uh, what Mr. Salencia did was stabilize that driveway with tailings from asphalt millings. Um, he came to me and asked me if I could help him, and I said, certainly. So I called the city, and I found out what they're looking for, and I called immediately uh, Woody Rice, an engineer that I've done a lot of work with. And I said, Woody, can you determine for me very quickly the if there is excess capability in the retention pond, because obviously that was going to be the big issue, is to do, um, to compute the amount of water runoff for this semi-permeable asphalt tailings driveway and see if the existing retention pond would handle it. Also, if not, we would have to dig some swales or some retention ponds along the side of it. Unfortunately, Woody said, I'd love to do that for you, but I can't do it for six months. I went back to the planning and development staff and I said, can I get a waiver on this for six months till I can get the engineering done in order to submit to you the future plan? Um, he said, I, I got no answer from that. I, I it was not, all I got was a letter back that was originally sent to me saying the violation. I contend this. I contend that uh, this existing driveway was always there. Uh, it was not stabilized in its original state. Mr. Silencia stabilized it with a semi-permeable material, not creating any runoff 
or any uh, excess water. Uh, since that time, his desires on what to do with this property may have changed. At one time, he was looking at getting it rezoned for uh, commercial. Now he's pretty much considering it for residential, residential of his own house, in fact. Uh, I would like the board to work with this man. I would suggest that you give him at least more time to respond to it. I know it's been a long time, but again, I ran head into the non-availability of any engineer that was familiar with the project, and that was delay. And I asked for a delay four months ago, five months ago. Um, I would also ask that you minimize the uh, amount of fine and the amount of, of uh, problems because I believe this has been blown out of proportion. I really must insist and must repeat that this is not a roadway. This is a private drive. This is a private drive made out of asphalt tailings, which is a semi-permeable material. And it is on the very same area that an existing driveway exists for years. Any other questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Mr. Garrison, you said uh, you and you talked to Mr. Rice, he couldn't do it for six months. When is that six months up? You're Pardon? Right. When is the six months up for Mr. Rice if he could help you? About the first of the year. That's what he told me. He says, I'm so busy, I cannot get on this for till the first of the year. And I was shocked by that because I really thought this was not a big deal, wouldn't take a lot of time. But I wanted to deal with him because he was most familiar with the property. Okay, well, okay, let's back up just one, one thing. When Did you apply for a permit to even start this project? No. No, I wasn't involved in this project. The owner did this. I'm just trying to help him okay. as a result. The owner did this without my knowledge. I, the first time I was aware of it, when he sent me the letter from the city saying it was, it was not permitted. Okay. Then I became aware of it. I went out there and looked at it, walked it over and see what it is. <laughs> Since then, I've delved into it much more. I've looked at some of the old maps and see that there was a driveway there, although it's difficult to see because of the tree canopy. Also, I might mention that, too. I forgot to mention that, that Mr. Salencia told me that he did not take any trees down. So there was no mass clearing. This representation that he cleared the lot is not true. Uh, he he uh, certainly scraped some grass and some weeds up that he did that and made it flat because it was not flat and then he had these asphalt tailings applied and again I stayed I wasn't involved in that work I'm playing catch up now okay. uh, since he first let me know about this uh, and so you have a situation where no clearing of trees took place uh, replacing existing drive with a uh, not semi-permeable material. Uh, he is going to develop this property at some time. It may be developed as commercial. It may not be developed as commercial. It may be developed as residential. Also, there was an issue with the city regarding the unison of title. Evidently, the property that he built his, or I actually built it for him for the restaurant, the retention pond on, is deeded on that property rather than the restaurant proper property. So the county wanted a unity at Titusville. As far as my remembrance, we did that. But basically, I've talked to the Solonichas, and they've indicated they have no problem with that. They'll take that, that retention pond and make that area, just that area, uh, a unity of title with their restaurant property. The rest and the remainder of this falls on another property, the property that we're speaking of now. So I wanted to bring that up too, is that they don't really have any problem with the unity of title issue. That, that can be done and be done legally. Um, but I really wish you would consider some of the things involved here because I think the city is coming down pretty heavy handed on us. Uh, it's not a road, it's a, it's a stabilization of an existing driveway and it is a driveway. Uh, it will probably be used for whatever development that is to come later on, whether it be residential and or uh, commercial. 
Uh, and, well, it's zoned uh, right now for residential, if I remember correctly. Yes, it is zoned for residential. And more than likely, that's what it's going to come up with. Mr. Salencia has indicated to me he wants to build his house there. And I don't know if he'd take the entire parcel, but that could be. So you may wind up with this being an asphalt uh, tailings driveway to one single home. Okay. Uh, I can't, I can't speak any further than that because he hasn't given me permission to do that. But um, again, I reiterate: uh, please take these things into consideration, and please allow him some time to get the unity of title done, and also to submit engineering for the water runoff and uh, ultimately plans for using the property. And December 9th is obviously not reasonable. He can't do anything in oh, less than a month. Oh, it's January 9th so far. Oh, January 9th. Well, even January 9th is kind of unusual. Uh, uh, that It's very difficult to get these things done. You've got engineering delays. You've got delays in communicating with the city. You've got delays in getting back uh, first review. So in my experience, and I've been building homes here, and I've been building commercial projects for 46 years. I mean, I've been around a long time. And, and boy, up to my knees show it. <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, uh, that amount of time, I think, is insufficient. Now, should, should we have gotten something done by now? Absolutely. And I tried, and I tried to get an engineer involved, and I tried to get the city satisfied. But unfortunately, I was not able to. So how much time do you think you would need, or y'all would need? Depending on the engineer, I can get everything that, that we need right away in my end, and I want to get everything done. All right, my goal is to be, you know, complete in compliance, like Jim said. That is, you know, my chosen place for my own personal home. I'm greedy. I want the whole property. Uh -huh. But um, depending on the engineer, I would say probably, what do you think, February? Yeah. But and by then I can have everything done that we need at our end. Our intention is to do every, every everything that is required of it. It was my error in, in, in judgment. I didn't realize that I would have to have a, a permit for putting uh, tailings over uh, what was already there, um, and that I take responsibility for. But our goal is to correct it. Okay. I don't have anything else. If you have more questions, don't have any more questions. Um, I don't have any questions. I was just going to say that what we need is a permit um, for this property, um, and a reasonable amount of time to um, get this all done. Um, I just asked the city a recommendation. I have no problem with giving a, an extension. Um, it's just how much of an extension. Well, also, the complaint doesn't uh, mention it, but I think important <coughs> for the city is this unity of title. And I believe that we can get that straightened well, out. All what we're interested in not really is a permit required. Okay. Uh, anything about a pond or uh, that is all something that the, the city deals with, we're only interested in is the uh, permit required, mm -hmm. and that's all we're going to address. Uh, like I said, I would have no problem with giving... A recommendation of uh, an extension for this. I just need to know what kind of recommendation that the city would want to uh, um, for us to give. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. So I know that we just had a case that we the city did agree to a continuance on, and there were several reasons for that. But each case is judged on its own merits here. And the violation that's before you, 34-10, is for permit required, and the city has not obtained any initial submission of an application here. And to continue this case, I think, would be to continue the very issue at hand, which is that the owners failed to submit an application, and the necessary components of that application is not relevant here today. It's There was a roadway that was constructed and a meeting was held in July over four months ago between city staff and the owner of this property. And development services indicated that a site permit review is required. And that was over four months ago. And if it takes six months to get an engineer to look at the stormwater, well, the city's recommended 60 days for compliance on this action. Because in, in, you, in our final slide here, you saw that the city recommended 60 days to 
get a permit for this property. And I don't know how long the industry will demand at this time, but we've already been working over four months waiting for that permit application to be submitted to the city. So there's been no application whatsoever, nothing? I have no record of any permit being submitted on this property for this construction of a drivetrain that was on a vacant property. There was nothing known to the city prior to our July meeting when I was not present, but city staff met with the owner and said there is a road. The, the city asked with an application to show a sketch showing the drive aisle that has been constructed, including width and overall square footage. I can't even tell you how big it is because we haven't received that information. If the square footage is over 1,000 square feet, that will trip another stormwater requirement and will likely require different sub submittal items. And, and so we don't know that until the applicant submits that information to the city. Again, so that's beyond the scope of what you all look at, but that's what we're, the city staff is looking for. And we're looking for 60 days for them to at least get the permit in place or permit applied for. If there's a permit application that was still pending review, then perhaps that would be a reason to continue this case, but we don't have that yet. May I add something, please? I submitted a, a, a sketch drawn on a survey showing where this, this driveway or this, uh, you call it a road, uh, exists. Um, and uh, I, I was working with Mandy Lamont and trying to get her to, to give me an extension so I could get the engineering done. It would make no sense to me at all to submit for a permit without the required information. And I don't believe Mandy would have even accepted it unless you have the data that she wants to see. And she sent me a list of all the data that has to be there. So that's why nothing has been done in four months. Um, not being able to have enough time to get an engineer to address this. And, uh, and I did respond with a sketch showing where about the road was. And an aerial. Let me get, set something really straight here. If they'd applied for a permit, and then gotten all these instructions of stuff they basically what we're looking for because there's no permit we're looking for submission of a permit application correct it would be an after the fact permit because the roadway has already been constructed which is different from getting a permit to go commence construction yes a permit is required for the road that was constructed ma'am i can submit a permit tomorrow for doing the roadway well, I think we need but some clarification. Provide. The I board needs some clarification yeah. because it's one thing to say permit applied for, but I think what the city staff is trying to say is there's been plenty of time to actually put in the application. We want you want the you want the permit approved. You want everything done within 60 days. That was a recommendation. Of course, this board could extend that or continue this case beyond the recommendation, but that would get, have given six months beyond the initial meeting from July to January for the owner to do this work. What I'm, what I'm trying to figure out is if they applied, uh, whether they applied four months ago or applied today for the permit, and then somebody comes back and says, you need this, this, and this. At least we have evidence that a permit's been applied for. Well, and the board may also want to think about the option of doing a two-step order, having an application date within 30 days or less. Days. Okay. I mean, it right. sounds like it's pretty simple to put in the application. According to what this gentleman just said, he could do it tomorrow. But you have one date for putting in the permit application and then another date for a final compliance. Would that be a doable? There, there are several components, as the, Mr. Garrison has stated. Once a application is submitted, all of the components are required to be included with that. And I don't know that he will have the engineering within a couple of days. And so that has been his reason for delay, which I do respect and understand. But the city hasn't received anything. And there's more than one engineer in Brevard County. I understand there's one that's most familiar with the city of Titusville properties but there are other options for the owner to consider. I understand also there's a difference between making an application for a permit and making an application for a permit that is subsequently going to receive a permit. And the difference to those two items, you know, if you wanted me to make an application, I can do it tomorrow. 
but it's not going to contain the data that Mandy wants and what is required by the city. That's going to take me some time with an engineer. Now, what I will do is after this meeting, I will em employ uh, Woody Rice to do at least the preliminaries for me, at least get it to a state that I can submit it to the city with, with some faith and go from there. Now, I might be able to do that in a month or let's say three weeks, um, but I can't assure that. It's, it all depends on the engineer. And as far as going to other engineers, I went to other engineers. They told me the same thing. They were too busy. I want to ask a question that, and Debbie, you might know this. I don't know. If you submit for a permit for a driveway or a road or whatever, do you know, do you, he might know, but as an individual, would I know what I needed to submit without submitting everything for the, without applying for the permit, and then they tell me what I need to show? Well, I think when you have experienced people processing your application, yes, you, you know what you're supposed to have, and you've, you've presumably already talked to the city, and they've let you know what you need to do to I'm submit. fully aware of what needs to be submitted, but I am a little bit confused. This is residential property. And in my history of 46 years building the city of Titusville, I've never submitted that kind of engineering for a driveway on a residential property. Never. Now I'm being held to the standards of commercial. They're applying the commercial. They want water studies done, and they want to see where the runoff's going. Uh, it, that is not normally done on a residential property. It is certainly done every time on a commercial property. I don't, I don't think it's for this board to, to That's planning, I would think. make that determination of whether it's appropriate to, for them to be asking can, what they're asking. I can tell you after 46 think, years you know, of excuse building. Excuse me, just hang on. Uh, I think that the only thing this board needs to determine is, has something been done where a permit was required? If so, how much time do you want to provide? I agree a permit is required, whether it's residential or commercial. I don't agree that commercial standards should be applied to a residential lot. That's all the difference I'm trying to make. In, in 46 years of building houses in Titusville on site plans, I have only showed arrows, squiggly arrows, showing which way the water goes. And that's been sufficient for residential. Now we're over into this area of calling it a commercial where I have to hire an engineer to do water studies over a three-day period and show how much runoff is where and how it's going to be contained on the property or whether it's going to run off. Uh, you know, these are all commercial requirements, not residential. The man wants to build a house. Now, he knows he's in violation of doing the driveway prior to getting a permit, and he accepts that. And he says, right now, you can count on his word, because he's an honest guy, that he will remove whatever the city doesn't approve, or hopefully approve it. Now, I'm saying, give the man some time, and don't come down so hard on him with a violation of a permit. You can argue that four months ago he should have been doing this. I was trying to attempt to do it, because at that time, I thought we had a chance of getting the engineering done. But subsequent to that, it hasn't happened. Now, I can prevail upon Woody Rice or some other person, some other engineer, to do this engineering in a very short time frame. However, I still come back to residential property. That's not required. Now, she's right. It's up to land planning to decide what they want on this. But you look historically, they've never required on a resident property an individual building a house, they've never required that water study. They have required a sub de uh, developer building a subdivision to do the water study. He's not building a subdivision. He's interested in building one house on many acres. What is it, three and a half acres? Yeah, four, almost. four Almost four acres. Never before has the city of Titusville required water studies and engineering on such an animal. Again, as the board attorney has stated, the, I respect Mr. Garrison's comments, but the site review analysis is not subject to this board's review at this time. You are simply here to decide whether or not there's been a violation of commencing construction on the property. It's 4.6 vacant acres. 
with, um, without a permit. That's the only question for this board. The second follow-up question is how long would you like to give the owner to either remove the improvement or obtain a permit for the roadway? Y'all understand that? What, are, what we're supposed to do? What do you want to do? Well, past January 9th? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. No. Th do you want to give it past January 9th? Yes, for February. Give it February. Make a motion. See where it goes. Uh, yep. Uh, just want to clarify with the board. There's a difference between continuing the hearing or extending the hearing or finding the violation, establishing the violation, and then giving X amount of time to I agree. comply. Yeah, so the violation. Yeah. Give an extension. Go ahead. You got it. And I might be opening a can of worms, but what is the difference in a driveway and a roadway? How, I mean... Where would you draw the line at a driveway versus a road? Good question. Chelsea, you want to answer that? You know, I think that's a little bit out of my wheelhouse. I'd like to try and speculate, but I, I don't I don't regularly make that determination, so I can't say that I could answer that, although I could grab our engineer from the planning department community development if you'd like to call a recess and have him come out here. I, I've worked construction I would rather I'd rather defer to the expert at city staff to answer that question if you'd like to have the answer for that. I, I would I, like may, an answer may for I that. Add something? I, I don't, Go ahead. We're gonna have somebody come in from city planning. Can I add something to that question? Sure. I built a lot of houses. I built houses that had fifteen feet of driveway. I built houses that had a thousand feet of driveway. So that's an extreme variable. In this case, it's 490 feet or something like that, that of the asphalt tailing driveway. All right, let's take a 15-minute break. But that clock's wrong, so. Be back here at 3.35.
that clock's not right up there. Okay, go ahead, Ch Chelsea. Let's roll on. Well, We're back in session. Welcome back. We are back at case number 19-49 after a brief recess. The city has requested the city engineer to come in and answer a question regarding the difference between a roadway and a driveway. I feel like I should have known, but I didn't. I'd like to <laughs> invite KB up to the podium to answer this question and to go over any other questions you may have. But again, focus on the one code section that is being asserted today regarding this property, and that is just whether or not a permit is required. And at this time, I'd like to invite KB up. And I believe he has to get sworn in before he starts his testimony. Come on up. To raise your right hand, do you swear or affirm that the testimony you give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. And could you please state your full name? Uh, full name is Kwabena, K-W-A-B-E-N-A. -E Last name is Ofosu, O-F-O-S-U. And your um, title? Community Development Engineer. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. KB, could you please answer this question? That, please explain what is the difference between a roadway and a driveway? So a roadway, uh, sorry, a driveway. A driveway is connecting a uh, parcel to the public uh, road network. So it provides access from the public right of way onto the property. That's the uh, function of a driveway. Also roadway. roadway is built in the public right of way. It's connect the they're connecting areas of the city, providing through uh, through fares from one end of the city to the other, connecting uh, subdivisions and so on and so forth. So they're serving a, a larger area of uh, of, of <laughs> larger areas within the city and connecting them to each other and to the road network in general. So the two words do have distinct meanings, and I'm sorry for mixing them up earlier, and I think that kind of got us off track. The next question that I'd like to ask KB is, is a permit required for either a driveway or a roadway? The permit is required for a driveway and also a roadway. Um, I believe it's section 30, and I forgot the... Uh, Yes, 30, 3010, uh, under permits required. Uh, it states... Chapter 34. Thir sorry, 3410, yes. Uh, so our interpretation is any um, alteration uh, of, of an existing lot um, will require a, uh, a permit. And uh, when we meet with the developers, uh, depending on the extent... Uh, of, the, of the work being proposed will determine whether it is classified as a class one permit or a class two permit. Well, what's the difference between the two of those? Uh, class two permit, class one permits are for smaller type work, um, improvements, upgrades. Um, uh, my threshold in reviewing, for example, the stormwater elements is that if it's less than a thousand square feet of new impervious surface it would be a class one whereas anything beyond that would be a class two so a class two would need a uh, runoff yes class two would have a uh, stormwater is required under class two okay so that technically we need a we need a permit for the driveway but I need a definition for impervious impervious is we do have a formal definition in the city which is about a paragraph long, um, but I'll, what it effectively says is that it has to be a stabilized surface um, that, that remains stable regardless of the weather conditions. And also it prevents the uh, uh, percolation of water through the surface. Um, so any surface that meets that uh, definition is technically an impervious surface. So if it's rocks, the water is going through, this, so that's not impervious, right? Uh, but it is stable. A uh, rock would, would be stabilized. In other words, it wouldn't, 
wash out uh, with a minimal uh, rain event. It would stay in place and provide a stable surface for vehicles to, to, to traverse on. And the length for one versus two, less than a thousand feet, correct? It is a thousand, it's, it's based on the area, the square footage. So it's a thousand square feet of area, the, the footprint. Yeah, it's the footprint, not the length. Okay. So whatever length you have, you'll have to multiply by the width, and that'll give you the square footage. If a driveway already existed in some fashion, it could, it, it could be dilapidated, who knows. But if it already existed and you made some improvements to it, would you still need a permit to do that? I mean, yes. if it's already existed? If it's already existing... Well, it depends on uh, what type of uh, improvements are being done. Um, if it's going to alter drainage flows, for example, then yes, you would need a permit. But if it didn't? If it's a maintenance activity like cleaning or... Uh, what about widening? Widening, yes, that would, that would trigger a permit. Okay. You're increasing the, the footprint, so that's not maintenance. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Come up to the podium. Somehow, some way, everybody's thought this is a commercial project. You know, he referred to all developers know you need to get permits. Well, this is not a development. This is an individual trying to get a permit later on for his house to be built. Now, do you need air? Absolutely, he admitted to that. He said he will can, he will agree to do with whatever the city wants. Now, if the driveway comes off the road, which I think is what Buffalo Road, JJ. JJ, excuse me, if it comes off of there and goes to a house, it's a residential driveway. Have you ever required? Sorry, you need to speak into the microphone. Oh, have you ever required a water study on a residential driveway? Well, I, I, I'm not sure, this, Madam this, Chair, whether this, this is, is relevant because the board is not deciding whether this is a commercial property or a residential property in terms of whether a permit is required. Well, w what I'm trying to say is that uh, when uh, Vic Salencia decides to build his house, I'm sure he would agree to take out the portion of the driveway that he has restabilized that leads from the house to his current restaurant. Although I don't see why he's required to do that, but he'd probably do that. And he's already stated to you that he'll do everything necessary to, to make the city happy. Uh, I am more into the details because this usually falls on my lap to get it permitted. And when I run across uh, the planning and development categorizing me as a commercial developer of property, when we're trying to just build a house there, that's a dichotomy that I think is causing a lot of this friction. Said before by, by the owner, yeah, it'll well, make the city happy. All right, well, all we're going to do right now is vote on whether or not he was in violation of the fact of not having a permit. That's our bottom line. We don't do all this other stuff. That's not our preview at this yes, time. Yes, there's no problem, and there's no argument that he was in violation of stabilizing a driveway with tailings and that's it all he did he didn't do any clearing didn't do any grading other than to level it out it was a semi-stabilized driveway with marl uh, so i don't have a problem with that and i don't believe he does either all right we mm -hmm. just don't want to be held to a standard that is not applicable but that's not we're not here to do the standard we're here to vote on whether or not but he part had of your not. consideration is that he violate all these other codes and I'm trying to say that we these have, other codes. But, sir, Mr. Gage, we're pertain. only voting on one code right now. Yep. So let us take care of that. Okay. And then if something else comes up, you all be right back here. Thanks. Everybody satisfied? What do y'all want to do? Not in 
Chairman, I'll take this. Go for it. I'll huh? try to do my best with it. Um, I move that the board issue the following finding of a fact and, con in, and conclusion of the law in the case. The respondent is the owner of the property located at um, 2405 JJ Road, Titusville, Florida, uh, 32793. The respondent was given proper notice of the code of violations found by the code enforcement officer and was given the reasonable amount of time to comply before the case was brought before this board. The respondent was given proper notice of the hearing. The respondent or representatives did or did not appear which he is here today. I just want to make that clear. Uh, did to, uh, appear at the hearing today. The evidence and the testimony represented, rep, rep, represented shows that the respondent did not bring the property into compliance by the date, um, henceforth uh, no permit required, um, uh, fourth, in the notice, and the property is in violation of the following codes. Um, section 34-10, permit required. The respondent shall be giving until, um, I'd just like to have a little discussion on this. Um, we would, you recommended uh, January the 9th. Okay. Um, does the city want to go any f longer with that, or you're good with January the 9th? I, after meeting with staff, the city recommends January 9th as the date to correct this violation. But if you believe that more time is necessary, that's up for you all to discuss. Uh, one more question, uh, Ms. Chelsea. Um, uh, applying for the premier, would that um, satisfy? I would recommend that if you're interested in having a step order, that the first step would be to apply for a permit within 30 days and to obtain a permit within 60 days of permit application date, something like that. Um, can you help me with the wording on this, please? Absolutely. So you're on number six of the motion. Yes, ma'am. Respondent shall be given until, and then if, depending on what time frame, uh, it shall be given 30 days from the date of this order to apply for a permit, and then 60 days thereafter to obtain the permit. It's, what, was what that, would, that would work for me perfect. Okay. Can you make it so? Yes. I'll read number six then. Respondent shall be given 30 days from the date of this order to apply for the permit and shall obtain the permit within 60 days thereafter. And then it shall be the respondent's responsibility to immediately notify the code enforcement officer when compliance is achieved. So that's... Oh, okay. yep. Dem you should ask your turn. Okay. So that is set. Okay. 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 Um, Okay, and I'll continue on with uh, number eight then. Uh, if compliance is, is not achieved by this date, uh, a subsequent compliance hearing will be held and a fine of, a, of amount of uh, $250 per day may be imposed for each, of the, each and every day of any violation continues past the compliance date. In setting the proposed fine, the board considers the gravity of the violation and the action taken by the respondent to correct the violation and, and any uh, previous code violations by the respondent. Um, the city's cost of 
for two hundred and no. oh, I'm sorry, a hundred and two dollars and seventy three cents uh, that is imposed by the city. I, I'd like to reserve costs on that. In, in good faith with the city and and for a well-known uh, business in the city, okay? okay. That's it. I need a second. Motion by add second by. Are you going to second it? No. No second. I can't. Somebody's going to second it. Well, it's just for discussion. I mean, just be seconding doesn't mean you approve. Second means you are opening it for discussion. Second. All right, second by Gina. All right, motion by Ed, second by Gina. Any discussion? What is the compliance date? It was never. 90 days. Um, 30, days from the 30 days from the date of the order. So whenever that order is signed. And then after the permit application is put in, it's 60 days after to obtain the permit. So it's actually so 90 plus days. It could be 90 days then. 90 days plus. They have to sign the order. Okay. Any other discussion? Have any other questions? Roll call vote, please. It'll, it'll come up in 80 days. Member Grant? Yes. Member Monis? Yes. Member Herman? No. Vice Chairperson Beckles? Yes. Chairperson Bell? Yes. Motion carried. All right, Ms. Deborah, will you explain to, to them about what's going to happen now? Certainly. This is the initial hearing, so you have 30 days from the date the chair signs the order. I will prepare the order, the chair will sign it, and then the order will be sent out um, 30 days within the date the chair signs the order to apply for the permit, and then once the application is in uh, 60 days to actually obtain the permit. Um, that you will be sent a copy of that and if and what the order will also say is if it's not done within that time frame then you'll come back for a uh, compliance hearing and the city would like to clarify that the permit application means that all anticipated items on the submittal checklist have been provided including payment of the application fee for the permit and the permit being issued would require all final inspections have been made at the site and all necessary inspections have been approved by the building department for the permit at that time. Okay. okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you very much for your time and Okay. All right, guys. The next case on your agenda is number 19-52 for the property located at 1609 Whispering Hills Road. The city wishes to withdraw this matter due to compliance. Thank you. Thank you, KB. Do you need a motion on that? No, don't take any action because they were actually, the city is withdrawing it from the agenda then. Okay, great, thanks. Board of Members report. <coughs> city Attorney's report. I don't have Code Enforcement Manager's report. Yes, ma'am. Well, first I'd like to introduce May Wright, our newest Code Enforcement Officer. She comes to us with 12 years of experience. Oh, good. So y'all will be seeing her. Okay, great. Hi, 
Welcome to the board, or Thank welcome you. to the service. <laughs> You're welcome to step up and introduce yourself. Yourself, if you'd like to. <laughs> Give us all kinds of information. Um, uh, again, my name is May Wright. Um, I started uh, working municipality with the municipality in Texas uh, in 2005. Uh, started with permit tech, moved up to code enforcement, on to plumbing inspections. Uh, uh, floodplain management, things, whatever the department needed. I, I went and got certifications and helped the department out. Um, in 2015, uh, we moved out to the East Coast, uh, landed in North Carolina, worked there for approximately two years, again doing code enforcement, uh, zoning codes, uh, minimum housing codes. Um, due to a family illness, we moved down to Florida, and uh, in September, I was lucky enough to be asked to uh, come and uh, work for the city of Titusville. So I'm I'm very happy to be here and uh, look forward to working with everyone. Thank you. Glad you're here. And you'll always write. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that before. Thank you. Thank you. Chairman's report. I don't have a report other than uh, for... Uh, oh, uh, what? I said I got some more. Oh, okay. Good. I'm sorry. <laughs> Didn't catch that one. Go. And as y'all know, throughout the year, we, we brought... Uh, six structures to y'all for demolition and i'm happy to report that those permits were issued on friday and those six residences should come down within the next two to three weeks can you remember can you remember tell us i can uh 511 canaveral 1229 first street 508 lucky 144 roosevelt 192 Roosevelt and 711 Booker's Unit A and B. If you recall, some of those structures were actually burnt. Right. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, Roosevelt. Yes, sir. Yeah. But uh, so now we hope to uh, have those all resolved and back in front of council to assess the, good. the properties. Good. 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 And okay. last but not least, at the last council meeting, the city. Council advised staff to prepare an agenda item uh, for a special magistrate for, versus the code enforcement board. And I have prepared that and I'll be presenting it to council tomorrow night. Uh, and if you would, I'd be happy to email y'all uh, af after the meeting to what the council has decided. Not surprised, but that's okay. <laughs> okay. And with that, that was my last item. Okay. So this might be our last meeting, or Nick. No, no, ma'am. It'll take a while. It, it, if, if they would, yes, ma'am, it would have to be an ordinance change and, of course, the transition of board. So, yes, ma'am, you we still need your services. Okay. All right. All right. Well, on behalf of the board and our board members that are sitting here, um, happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. And those out there in the audience, thank you for, our, for your service, and thank you for keeping us safe and still going. Board member's report. Does anybody have a board member report? All right, then we're adjourned. And your clock is wrong up there. <laughs> <laughs>